YouTube. Happy Saturday. Um, it's Peg back at the history shelf once again. Um, thought I'd make a quick video. I have a couple things I want to show you and uh, a couple of things I got in the mail recently. Um, two catalogs and a book that I want to show you in particular. Um, so first off, let me start with, um, oh, I just got... I just got, you know, I was going to resisting the, the um, temptation to r rush out and get another book um, for another mystery series uh, just based off of booktube recommendations. And I resisted for a while, but, you know, I, I just couldn't any longer because uh, Steve brought it up again. And I know that David Murphy is a huge fan of this series. And, um, and Steve, yeah, Steve brought it up very recently. But um, it's the... Uh, Maggie Hope mystery series, and he was just like, you know, you need to really uh, give these a go. So the price was super cheap for the first book on Amazon, and so I just said, hey, for 10 bucks, I am going to try out Maggie Hope, you guys. So this is Maggie Hope, Mr. Churchill's uh, secretary, a novel. This is the first in the series by Susan Elia McNeil, or Elia. Um... So I'm excited. I just wanted to share that I am jumping on the um, the Maggie Hope mystery bandwagon, and I do have the first book in the series. And I guess there's like quite a few. And uh, I think um, I think what uh, triggered Steve mentioning it again was that he got a, a either an advanced copy or a finished copy of uh, uh, the latest book in the series, and he said he was just going to eat it up. And I was like, okay, that's it. That's it. FOMO is real. And I just didn't want to have FOMO anymore. <laughs> so I picked this up. This arrived uh, last night. Um, oh, I guess I should mention another book that came in the mail, which I hope to read and review very soon, or at least in the next few months. Um, so this is history. This is the Atlantic in World History, 1490 to 1830, uh, by Trevor Bernard. Um, and this is put out by uh, Bloomsbury Academic. They have great, great work. Um, just love their stuff. And I kind of get emails about, I sign up for their history, um, their history release, their history releases, new history releases. Um, and uh, I'm always just fascinated about how the oceans have tied the world together throughout history, through trade, exploration, uh, things like that. So. Actually, this this uh, this will be a nice compliment to a book that you'll be seeing um, coming up shortly in an upcoming bookshelf tour, which uh, has already been filmed. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of editing because it ran a little long, and there are places where I just needed to tighten things up. So Martine has graciously volunteered to uh, edit that for me. So that'll be coming later tonight, you guys, bookshelf tour, where I do the bottom shelf. I start down here. It ended up like a 40-minute video, but I know we could trim off at least, oh, probably four minutes, I'm thinking, <laughs> maybe more. But, um, and one of the books is on the, the Pacific. Uh, so this is the Atlantic in world history, um, you know, the Columbia uh, the Exchange, uh, things that are fairly well known when it comes to, oh, this is the study of um, exploration and trade, and I'm really excited about this book, so... So those are the two, actually, that were most recent. Now, I often like to browse catalogs. I know Steve loves his catalogs as well. Um, I sign up for different ones, or I'll find a book that that is, like in this case, I found a book and learned that the publisher was called Liberty Fund. And I'm like, oh, I'm not familiar with Liberty Fund, so let me go to their website. So I did. Um, they print a lot of books on economics. I know David Murphy. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video, because I wanted to share this, this what I got in the mail, because if you don't have it, I think you should, my friend. And it's free. It is free. Um, but uh, they print a lot of uh, economics, history of finance, political thought, uh, general history, history written in the last 200 years. Um, just... They got some stuff on American history, but this is, oh, it's amazing stuff. Anyway, they have a brand new catalog out, Liberty Fund Books. 
And I went to the website and they're like, request a catalog. And I was like, okay. So I emailed them. I said, I'd like to have a catalog. They were gracious to write back. They said, we've dropped one in the mail. And this thing arrived and it is like a book. It is beautiful. I mean, it is hard stock paper. Look at this. Oh my gosh. And the first thing I thought was David Murphy would die. Um, <laughs> they have a whole section on all of, like, we got Lud Ludwig von Mises over here. Look at this. We have a section on all the collected uh, Hayek works, and we know how much of a fan of Hayek he is. And, and David is just starting a read-along um, at his channel, and I'll link his channel below. Uh, Milton Friedalong. Uh, Fried oh, he should have called it a Friedalong. <laughs> ah, that's funny. A Milton Friedman read-along on his book, Free to Choose. Uh, and I still need to watch this video, and I still need to see um, how many pages I should have read and, uh, written, or, uh, written, read already. But anyway, um, but look at they have all this, they, their own editions of these books, and they're not super expensive. Like these paperbacks, fourteen dollars. Okay, um, so you know I'm not you know I'm not a huge um, economics or finance whiz or major by any means, um, but there's some heavy hitting like Enlightenment thinkers that I want to discover, and they have a lot of these things in here like. They have the Glasgow edition of the works of Adam Smith and, and correspondence of Adam Smith. So look at that. Look at this set right here. Okay, only $107. <laughs> uh, and that includes all of his major works such as uh, The Wealth of Nations, The Theory of Moral Sentiments, um, uh, his correspondence, um, lectures on rhetoric and belle lectures on jurisprudence. So, and then they break them down by single volumes. So if you just wanted to get like the, thor the theory of moral sentiments in this version, it would be like $14. $14 for a 422 page book, that's amazing. And then it has just general economics titles, early economic thought in Spain. Uh, then we go into the Hayek section. Um, it, this is just a really impressive catalog. This is like, nice heavy stock paper um they obviously have money to do that oh and then when you get the catalog you get a catalog special save 20 percent using that code pretty outstanding look at this stuff um what was really making me i you know so i'm flipping through i really need to take more time and just i'm going to read a lot more i mean it is like a reading experience just going through this catalog um a ton of economic stuff uh, uh, Austrian school of thought, um, Ludwig von Mises, uh, the man and his economics, I mean, studies on him. Um, oh, and this is, yes, so this was interesting because I've, at times I've been very close to picking up uh, F Frederick Bastiat um, because I, I figure he is one of the ones that are the big, oh, the big highlights as far as, uh, or the, the bright lights, I should say, of political and um, economic thought. Uh, again, this is uh, the first completely scholarly collection of economic sophisms demonstrates that even today, Bastiat deserves his reputation as one of the most gifted writers on economic matters. Um, this one is only $14 in paperback. I think it was the law. That was the one that I wanted to read. Yes, it was the one that um, the law. And oh, just give me the rundown on this one. Sorry, you guys. It's just it's all kind of uh, they give a description for all three of these: the law, the state, and other political writings. I think that's the one I was looking at. Um, it's like 500 pages. Again, only 14 dollars. Crazy. So I was interested in getting a best yacht. Um, I'm just learning a lot about who like the big thinkers are in economics because they're all in here. Um, we have the collected works of James M. Buchanan, not Pat Buchanan, James Buchanan. So this is a, an economics guy here. He won the Nobel 
Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 86. Uh, so just a ton of just kind of stuff that's a little bit harder for me to really grok, but um, for like a David Murphy type, man, I think, I just saw this and I was like, you need, and it's commemorating 60 years. Um, it says, of preserving, restoring, and developing individual liberty through investigation, research, and educational activity. Wow. Um, let's see. They have a section on history. Um, they've got Edmund Burke in here. We've got, um, uh, oh, there was one that I was really intrigued by. They have big sets. They have big sets of books, which are, oh, look at this. We have the history of English law before the time of Edward the First. It's in two volumes um, by Sir Frederick Pollock and Frederick William Maitland. And um, okay, so in the back though, this is where I found a, a few that I, it really just pinged my interest. Oh, they even have Spanish titles and Portuguese titles. Some DVDs. Um, yeah, they have Portuguese titles. I think that's really neat. I love how they have these Spanish titles. Um, and then we go into some history. Uh, this looks great. This is, this, I'm really intrigued by this. This is a three volume set of the selected writings of Lord Acton. Um, and it is edited by um, J. Rufus Fears. Now, I'm gonna bring in something separate. J. Rufus Fears is one of my favorite lecturers uh, on the great courses, um, uh, the classes that I've taken on audio, either CD or um, streaming. Um, I've got them downloaded on Audible as well. Oh, his class, I mean, I, his wisdom of history was amazing. I mean, these things are keepers. I will listen to those over and over. And Jay Rufus Fears, I guess he was, um, he passed away, oh, probably maybe eight years ago, I think. But um, one of their highest rated instructors on uh, the great courses, and then uh, there's a reason why. He really has a passion for storytelling and bringing history in and telling great truths. And, and uh, he quotes, he's quoted Lord Acton quite a few times in like the wisdom of history. Uh, but he's, yeah, he was a big, um, that was his, his life's work really, along with teaching, was um, editing and, and compiling all the selected writings of Lord Acton. So I'm intrigued by that. Three volume set, um, you know, you can get hardback or paperback, and paperback's only like $50, but, um, so I was like very excited to see that. I highly recommend if you guys have Audible or, uh, you know, you have great courses, uh, you know, a sign up that you check out some of those history titles that are taught by Jay Rufus Spears. He is incredible. He made me want to learn about so many different aspects of all these different things that he talked about, whether it was the Greek Wars, Persian Wars, American Revolution. Um, he, he covered it all. He was great. Just great. And then there is, um, they have the select, select works of Edmund Burke. Now, I have the Folio Society edition of his Reflections on the Revolution in France. Um, that's Pretty, mo pretty much my only um, familiarity with Burke. I'm not sure if I have a biography on him or not. I don't think so. Um, but then this one intrigued me. This is the uh, French Revolution in three volumes by, I hope I'm pronouncing this, Hippolyte, Hippolyte? Hippolyte, I guess, Hippolyte Taine. Um, Hippolyte Taine's French, The French Revolution was written from the viewpoint of conservative French opinion. Um, I think, and he, let's see, he wrote in the 19th century. So I'm always intrigued by historians that wrote over a century ago. Um, it's just so, it's so enlightening to me to see how people thought back then and how they did the craft of history, um, in, in centuries past. Oh, that's probably why I love Herodotus and Thucydides um, and all the all the ancient historians. I just it, it's fascinating to me. And in this one, uh, Taine condemns the radicals of the French Revolution, 
unhesitatingly contradicting the Rosie uh, Russo Rousseau-esque view of the revolution. Um, interesting. Taine approached the revolution in the same way that a medical doctor approaches a disease. Indeed, he described his work not so much as a history as a pathology of the revolution. His method constitutes his principal contribu contribution to study of the subject. Um, so then it, it kind of goes into more detail about um, how he wrote about it, but it's a neat three box, uh, it's a box set. Um, I'm, I'm just so intrigued by that. I think that's, that's on my list and my wish list along with the Lord Acton um, is the, uh, the French Revolution by Taine. So anyway, I just, I discovered this, uh, this catalog. Um, they sent it to me. I requested it free of charge. Oh, here's the other one. Ah, here's the other one I want. <laughs> Good old David Hume. You know, Scottish Enlightenment. Um, his six-volume set of the history of England. Look at that. From the invasion of uh, Julius Caesar to the revolution in 1688. Woo! I just love sets. Don't you just love history sets? So this guy can come in, um, um, it's over 3,000 pages combined. Uh, there's hardcover edition. There's also a paperback edition. And if you can believe it, six volumes at over 3,000 pages is only $72. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so this is a smorgasbord, as I call it, of fascinating stuff. There's a lot of philosophy in here, for sure. Um, so if there's a lot of philosophy folks out there, you will dig this. Um, David Murphy, economics, you will dig this. Um, history people, you will dig this. I'm, I'm digging especially the historical section here. Um, we even have the selected writings of Sir Edward Coke in three volumes. Oh, look at this. I mean, anyway, guys, if you're interested in this catalog, again, all you do is go to their website. I think it says on their website, um, if you'd like a catalog, email us at this address and just request it. So I just sent them an email, uh, said I would love to have it, gave them my shipping address. They sent one right out. This is a 175 page catalog. I mean, this is a keeper. I was just really impressed with this. So anyway, I had to show that off. So not as uh, impressive, but still, I just wanted to show I, I got this History 2020 catalog from Lexington Books, which is an imprint of Roman and Littlefield. They make a lot of textbooks and stuff. Um, you know, not as, not as meaty as far as the summaries and stuff like this, but I love browsing through these catalogs. They are, uh, they're fabulous. They're fabulous. Um, have I found anything in this one yet? You know, I, I went through here pretty quickly, kind of quickly browsing. I haven't had a chance to really sit down and mark things up, but, um, I know there's a couple in here that are intriguing to me. Um... I'm seeing a lot of books coming out about Amritsar, which is the um, the massacre, the British massacre of, in, of Indian people in um, at Amritsar. In fact, I have a, a couple of books. That's my dryer. Oh, isn't that great? We picked that up. It's laundry day here at the History Shelf. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a couple of books on that. And um, actually, I've got one right here. Emritzar, 1919, uh, An Empire of Fear and the Making of a Massacre by Kim A. Wagner, um, Yale University Press. Uh, I also requested a book from Case, Casemate Publishing. Uh, they have a new book coming out. It's a, it's a shorter book, but um, I think it's going to be a nice compliment to this. Uh, but this one's uh, quite beefy. But, uh, yeah, they have another book in here on Emritzar, looking back after, uh, like, my Looking back from like a hundred years on, uh, what do we have here? A book on H. H. Asquith, Last of the Romans. Crazy. Um, you know they got this really just oh John Stuart Mill on history, human nature, progress in the stationary state. Um, intriguing. They got a section on like you know uh, 
early ancient history. We've got, I, where is it? I saw it earlier and I really wanted to get, okay, I can't find it. But anyway, so, a lot of cool stuff. You know, I, I just, I love getting history uh, book catalogs. They're so much fun. You know, ah! <laughs> I just showed my address. Okay. <laughs> ah, I might have to edit that one out. Shoot. Okay. Anyway, guys, so uh, <laughs> that's that's what I got. I got these two catalogs. I got um, Mr. Churchill's secretary and um, the Atlantic and world history. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll upload this video and we will um, be putting up my first, uh, continuing my bookshelf tour. I did one a few months ago with these Russian books behind my head. But uh, we're going to be going down, down there and, and working our way up. So that's coming soon. I hope everyone's having a groovy Saturday. And uh, take it easy. Thanks, BookTube. And thanks for all the new subscribers and comments. I just had so much fun with you guys. So uh, let's keep it rolling. Until then, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.